Now we were, we're going to talk about the penalty era. The penalty era, I think, was it was a it was a change of moment in my whole career. You know, it was it was a refreshing change. You know, because for the first time, I remember Ward, my lawyer, saying, "Hey, I had a good talk with this brother named Neil Levine, and he wants to sign you." And I was like, "Wow!" Because at that time, I was in limbo between right after Return of the Funky Man, but I was doing production. So that kind of, you know, kept me afloat. I remember he was saying, yeah, he wants to sign you. And here we go. It's the first time a president of a label, not an A&R, not somebody co-signing like, yo, you should sign him. President knew who I was and said, if he's available, we want him, you know. And I remember working on Awakening. And I remember Neil telling me, I don't want you to change nothing you do. I want you to do exactly what you do and we'll market around that and you know at the time he had around the globe promotions so he had his own promotion company and that was the first time that I just seen things so much different he knew the passion that I had as far as the artists I like working with he knew I was hip hop personified so he knew like we going we want hip hop we got Ness we got hip hop and, I, you know, I worked with Karis one and I worked with so many people. The Lars Professor, Grand Pooba, Sadat X record was, uh, that was like the last record. You know, it was just like, Neil, Neil just knew me, man. He just knew I knew how to function and I knew what made other people function. It's like, yo, I want to do this record with Pooba, Sadat X. Lars Professor, and, you know, Neil's like, okay, well, let's go in there and record it, and, you know, and I said, nah, we got to do it a certain way. I need the budget in cash. You could give me the paperwork to tell him to sign off on it, but I need it in cash, because I felt, you know, when you get the money in cash, and you tell somebody, as soon as they do their verse, I got the money for you in cash, who's not going to come to the studio? They going to come to the studio. They going to be early, you know, because you got that cash, you know. And I remember, you know, doing the song and it was a dope song. And I was like, yo, let's shoot a video for it. I remember Neil going, I don't know, man. I heard all these these stories about Pooba not showing up, man. You, you sure if we shoot this video, he's going to show up? And I'm like, yeah, he's, he's my boy, you know. But of course, I had to confirm with him, like, look, man, don't don't make me look crazy, man. I want to shoot the video. And, yo, not for nothing, Pooba was, like, the first dude at the video. So we was like, wow, this this is going to go down. And, and the video was dope because, you know, I had everybody. I always wanted artists to play a part in my video. I don't just like to stand in the round, post it up, you know. So in a video, I had um, Joe on bass, Fat Joe on bass. I had Diamond on drums. I had Karis one on the piano, you know, like in a jazz setting. And I had Akinelli there. I had Big L there. I had AG there. I had Fat Man Scoop. Before the Fat Man Scoop, as we know it, you know, introduce and open the whole video. I had Evil D on the turntables. It was just an incredible time. We really had a lot of fun shooting that video. And that's what I always wanted to be, is that I, I thought in the past with videos, when you have a director that's not really understanding who you are and your vision, they come with these little silly treatments and it doesn't reflect the music. With Neil, Neil allowed me to write the treatments for all the videos. So this way I wrote parts that I knew I would be comfortable in because it's one thing me being on the stage, I could be on the stage in front of 10,000 and no problem. It's another thing if I'm out on the street and they say, roll them, and I'm trying to get into this music part and there's people walking by stopping and, you know, staring, it, it takes my, it distracts me. It takes my attention away from what I should be doing. So with me being able to write the parts and write them in rows where I knew I was gonna be comfortable in, it made the videos come off that much better, especially with game plan, hip to the game, actual facts. 
it was a great time. And even I remember going to see Roy Years and Brian Park. And I remember coming back to the office ecstatic like Monday telling Neil, like, look, man, whatever you do, I need to work with Roy Years. I got my, my other single coming up. And, you know, next thing you know, next session, in comes Roy, you know? You know, so that was crazy. And like I said, Neil trust me to come with the records. It was explained to me for the very first time that I was an international artist. And I didn't get it. He said, like, with, with our artists here, we got to just set them up in the U.S. And now that's it. With you, we got to set you up in Japan, Europe, even Australia when your release comes. So we got to find and make sure that you set for all these different markets and continents. And that was the first time that I was like, wow, I'm sort of kind of a big deal, like international. It made me, made me feel different. Made me, that whole experience taught me a lot, being on, being on um, penalty. For those that's not familiar with who Neil Levine is, Neil Levine was the president of penalty. Uh, records and he brought acts that of course y'all know CNN if y'all don't know no other group on it CNN there was another artist called Shabazz the Disciple I think he had another artist called Black Jack a group called Crooked Letters you know Neil was was hip hop man Neil loved the music and when you have a president that has that much passion for, for the music that that's on his label. And don't look at it as gimmicky, but really loves what you do. And, and comes, Neil was the type to come to your session. Might bring some wine. He's going to chill out and vibe out and, and tell you, ah, oh, this is great. This is dope. Yo, I got this idea. And I think as an artist, that's who you want. You want a president and you want a label on the team that's going to love what you do.